Hey everyone, it's Anya with the Season of Anya. Welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things yoga magic, witchcraft with a healing journey sprinkled in along the way. With that said, today we are going to discuss creating and cultivating a magical headspace. If you haven't already, go ahead and watch my video on connecting with spirit and building a meditation practice. Those videos already kind of go through the whole grounding thing and what it's like to connect with spirit, how to ground. Uh, but today we're going to go a little deeper than that. But for those of you who didn't watch my video, typically a lot of deep breathing <laughs> is going to be involved in the process. And that's kind of to slow down your nervous system, right? It's shutting out distractions because if you're really going to move energy and create magic, ask for blessings. If you're thinking about the laundry you have to do, you know, going to the gym tomorrow, I don't know, picking up the kids, like spirit's not going to take that seriously. And it's just, and not only that, you're not taking that seriously. You don't really want it. So how are you supposed to build that connection? Right? Also, taking out the distractions, deep breathing aside, this is a very grounded practice. It's very much about getting into your physical body and feeling, right? When you feel the energy move, when you feel spirit, when you feel like you're in a magical headspace, that's when you're feeling your most magical. Grounding is not something you're supposed to be taking off your, like checking off your to-do list. It's not about that. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm laughing. I have several times been a part of ritual and this is coming from someone who's working and doing the best she can to stay present, stay in the moment, but and not disassociate. But I just associated a few times during the ritual and I have straight up been like, can we try that again, guys? I wasn't here. And that's what it's about. It's about acknowledging it and not just being like, I have to read the powers that lie from within. I don't know, you know, but this is the spell I'm doing. This is no. The paper, the words we recite, the words we read, the rituals we do. These are supposed to serve as guidelines. And right now I can hear Taryn telling me this and I, I, I feel it even, you know, um, my high priestess, Taryn, she's always like, well, yeah, you write out a ritual, but like 95% of the time that doesn't happen because you're feeling something else in that moment. And that's absolutely true. So with that, take your time with it. it it's better to have a short and sweet practice but you're in it even if it's for like five minutes but you are there you are present and then lighting candles to the east and the west and the north and the south and like doing all these things and you're so caught up into in the intellectual intellectualization of it thinking it and not actually doing it and feeling it and being in it a big big part of getting into magical headspace is breaking the ego especially if you are new to this practice. I've already said it probably five dozen times on this channel, but it's going to feel foreign. It's not going it, to, it feels weird. You're, you're reading words and you're just like, okay, all hail Satan. I don't know, but you get my point. So with that, so if libations can help. It's not about getting plastered or getting so blazed that you're not there and you're just in your own world. But again, it gets you out of the thinking, it gets you into your body. That's, that is, you know, if you're of age and it's legal in your state, blah, blah, blah. Those things can help you connect with spirit and kind of get you into that magical headspace. Cause I mean, honestly, on, you'll see me a lot on this channel kind of reference Christianity. And that's just because A, that's the background I came from. And B, witchcraft is no different than Christianity. We're just a little spicier. But with that, 
praying. When I was younger, tried connecting with God. It was the same thing. It's like, um, hi, I, I don't know what to do. Same thing. It's only as weird as you make it, but also it, you want to develop a fluidity with it. So with that, if you're in a coven dynamic, some great ways to get into magical headspace, lighting up a bonfire, right? Nothing beats just being able, especially as a spire witch Leo over here, nothing beats um, gazing into the bonfire and just disconnecting and just feeling the presence of that just burning flames. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, throwing herbs in a cauldron, right? They're very privileged to have the opportunity to practice witchcraft at a beautiful property with a little witch's cottage. We'd all gather and, and grab whatever herbs appealed to us and smell them. Does this smell? Usually you, you, what you're called to, it tends to be good for whatever intention you're setting, whatever the working, whatever the ritual is called calling but smell it and connect with it, right? And then we would all throw it in a cauldron because yes, witches have cauldrons and then throw it in the bonfire. So that's another thing you can do with a coven to get into your witchy energy, into your magical headspace. Write them down if you're so called to as well. See what it is. That's why we have what we have today, right? Um, other people, you know, the words you write on the internet or you, the words and spells and rituals you read on the internet aren't, sacred and holy texts. Maybe some are, but it's just what other people did. So why not put out what you did, right? Um, <laughs> I kind of, I, I took a note on this, but pass the sage around, sage each other up, sage yourself, pass it on. The reason I say that is a sage is just such a clearing, clearing uh, experience in itself. Science has literally proven and linked that it clears negative ions in the, in space, in, you know, in, in, in a space, I should say, but also too, if you're working with a coven, sometimes you might be standing in a circle with some people for the first time, or you might really be in your head, you know, or someone brings a friend and you're like, oh my God, who's this person? What are we supposed to do? Something as simple as sharing and passing that sage along or whatever it is, you know, you could pass the herbs around, whatever, but it, it kind of creates that harmony and that flow. And it's a great way to kind of get the ball rolling and, and to, well, and to flow, really. I mean, that's what it's about. Once you're flowing, you're in, you're in magical headspace. Your headspace is right. If you're solitary, it's more or less the same thing. Get some incense burning. They have mini cauldrons. I have one. Oh, look at that right here. Little mini cauldron, little charcoal. Throw some little incense blend in here if you like to use one like that. For the love of God, have a window open. Just literally less than a week ago, I was over at my friend's house and doing like a little full moon working and I set off yet another fire alarm. Yeah, that was fun. Her roommates were very pleased with me. <laughs> With that said, light some incense, get the space going. Again, if you follow that same principle, you know, if you have a little collection of herbs, it's not about what the internet is telling you to do. It's not about what the books are telling you to do. It's about what feels to you, but it's about what feels right. And that's, that's going along with your practice. So for example, if you're trying to cultivate, I don't know, let's just go with self-love. That's very easy. Uh, if you're trying to manifest more love on a new moon, obviously, right? What comes to mind? Rose. Smell it. Mm, that smells nice. What about jasmine though? Ooh, that smells nice too. And you start just kind of throwing some things together. And that is such a great way to set space and get into the headspace. Plus uh, we have witches who buy and make blends, right? My my moon sister, Belladonna, brought this beautiful Beltane incense uh, to our Beltane celebration less than a month ago, whatever, a month ago. And it was just so nice because it's like, wow, that just smells like Beltane. And that's the point. Other than that, this could work again with, with, with both practices, but 
casting a little circle, whether it's in your spiritual space, whether it's in circle. Some people like to do that because it creates a, God, really, I mean, in my opinion, what it is, it's kind of like a safety bubble, right? Energetic bubble, a boundary, if you will. They work. Also, if you are solitaire, a spiritual bath before you get in works great. Quick little yoga flow. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's about it for now. Um, P.S. I don't know. Is the plant working? <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> I don't know. I just threw a plant in here today. Are we team plant or are we team go back? No. <laughs> Anyways. What do you guys like to do to get into magical space? I'd love to know. Always looking for different ways to connect with spirit and all that good stuff. So do be a dear and let me know. In the meantime, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please follow my channel. I appreciate the support so, so, so much. And um, they'll just keep encouraging me to make awesome content for you guys, which I am loving. Hope you are too. Until next time, so much love and gratitude to you on this journey. Bye for now.